of a problem. <laughs> a mod problem. There are just way too many and they're so good and I just want to install them all. There are mods for pretty much anything you can think of in Stardew Valley, letting you fix things that frustrate you, change the way things look, ones to add more rich story and new villagers, or mods that just add things that are absolutely absurd, like what, the, what even is this? Why does this even exist? I don't, I don't know, I don't know, but it's there. I play with well over 300 mods and growing every week on my Sad Sap Farm live streams, including quite a few that I've crafted myself and I get asked constantly for a modding guide, so here it is. Hey, hi howdy and hello friends, it's Wickedy here and we are going over everything there is about modding your game in Stardew Valley on PC. There are chapters on this video if you just want to get to this specific part, but I'll be going over quite a few things like beginner setup and the basics, where to find mods, what types there are, how to troubleshoot problems, update and install your mods, configure them to your preference, how to organize and use various mod managers, how to enable and disable mods manually, and more. Links to everything I mentioned in this guide will also be in the description too. Now there is a pretty decent modding guide on the Stardew Valley Wiki and if at any point you get lost, be sure to reference back there. I know I do. Personally, I've always been a visual learner, so I'll be walking you through all of the steps visually to help those of you like me who need to see to learn. If I didn't see it done, I'd forget it in less than a minute. Okay, let's begin. In order to use mods on your farm and game, we first need to look into getting the Mod Launcher, the good old Stardew Modding API, or Smappy for short. This suspiciously adorable puffer chick is the icon for this powerful tool. So let's install Smappy. You can download Smappy on their site, smappy.io, and keep up with all of the update notes here, or find it over on Nexus Mods, which is a site that I will be showing you more of later on. After extracting the file, find the executable and launch it. Don't be scared by seeing a console window here, it's just a part of Smappy and it is our installer. Now if you have installed Stardew Valley through Steam at its recommended file location like I have, finding your game folder will be easy. Smappy already has filled the general default out for you. On the wiki site, it shows default game folder locations if you have installed it through other means. If for some reason you have installed your game on another drive, we have to locate it for Smappy to install. An easy way to do that is right through Steam with the setting cog, manage, and then browse local files. This is the folder that your Stardew Valley EXE file is. You can click right here and copy the location and paste it into Smappy. Now I sometimes like to pin my games and launch them from my taskbar. You can also find the file location by right clicking and again on the name and looking at properties, or you can do that with your desktop shortcut. Okay, the installation is done. Your little puffer chick is now resting sweetly in the game folder and you have a new mods folder too. Mappy does come with a few mods right off the bat for utility purposes in the mod folder. So how do we launch Smappy? Well, there are a couple of different ways. You can just click this here and launch the game that way. You can do as I used to do and send a Smappy shortcut to your taskbar or the start bar or desktop and launch from there. If you use Steam and want to still be able to get Steam achievements while playing with Smappy, you can configure Steam to do that. Either leave the installer open or launch the Smappy installer again and it will give you this prompt which just adds some quotations and a little text to your game folder. Copy that, be sure to get the whole thing, and move on over to Steam. Get back into that property settings we talked about earlier and look for launch options under general. That shows what exe file launches when you launch through Steam, so if you replace it with the text we collected from Smappy, then when you launch Stardew through Steam, you'll be launching the Smappy version and your achievements and such will be enabled. I personally launch my Smappy with a mod manager, which we will be going over later, so when the, I want to switch to the vanilla game for speedrunning, I can run that through Steam. There's also a way to add Smappy as its own Steam game, and it's pretty straightforward. 
in your Steam library, just click this here next to add a game. Select add a non-Steam game to my library and then navigate to where your Smappy is installed, which I showed you how to find earlier. Select it and add selected programs and now we have both Smappy and the standard game file able to be launched from Steam. I like to rename mine to just Smappy, which can be done by right clicking and selecting properties. Okay, so now you have your launcher, congratulations. Now it's time to download your first mods. There are so many options to choose from and quite a few places to find them from. I personally use Nexus mods the most as that seems to be the most populated and where I get my mods for my other games that I play. There is also Mod Drop, which is quite nice and even has mod packs that you can install with the mod pack launcher. Sometimes you can find mods on the Stardew Valley forums, though you might have to do a little bit digging to find them. The regular way to install a mod is to download the zip or rar file, extract that, and move the folder into the mods folder we created when we installed Smappy. You can also extract the file directly to the folder too. And that's pretty much it for the most basic way to install a mod. Now, Nexus and ModDrop both have file managers that can potentially help with the installation process. Nexus has the Vortex which allows you to install, uninstall, and update mods, and ModDrop has their client too. Both are very useful, though I haven't really used ModDrop myself, and updating mod files through the Vortex has at times updated them incorrectly and caused issues for me. Maybe it's just a control thing for me, but I prefer the old drag and drop method. This is also the basic way to update your mods too. Your Smappy console will show what mods need updated in a pretty purple color. Just head on over to the download page of that mod and download the update if you want to do it without a manager. Follow the same steps that I showed for installing, drag and drop, and replace this time. Sometimes that doesn't always work when you launch the game because mod creators change file names or whatnot. So if updating your mod this way didn't work for you, just delete the folder and reinstall the newest one. We will get into organizing your mod folder a little later. For now, let's download some mods. There are quite a few different types of mods and it's important to always read the description of the mod and check that you have all of the other mods that they require to work. Some mods are not immediately noticeable in the game, but they are a framework for allowing other mods to add content. A lot of mods are visual and are purely for a new aesthetic. There are custom items, custom locations or map replacements, custom NPCs, custom interface, and a bunch of mods that can change aspects of the game like time, changes to things in the world, and your cheat or efficiency mods. These mods will only work for the person who installed them, except for time and world changes. So if you play multiplayer, it's usually best to have everyone running the same mods to avoid any issues. For this video, I chose a few visual mods, Kitty Slimes, Visible Fish, Wayback Pelican Town, and Better Crops and Foraging. I have a map replacer for the farm, a custom location called the Desert Afforestation Area, and I've added Mr. Ginger, one of my favorite custom NPCs. I've also added UI Info Suite 2, which is my favorite interface mod, and added my own personally crafted mods for some custom items and coop animals. These dust sprites need a framework mod to work, but if you notice, the original mod isn't really updated anymore. So like I said, always be sure to check the description to find the correct supporting mod, or just head on over to smappy.io and search for the mod that you are looking for under the mod compatibility section. This is a great place to see what mods are no longer supported or updated to, or what have unofficial patches. Every time you launch Smappy, you'll see this console window pop up. It is your console or little command center if you'd like to call it that. Here we can see what mods are being loaded, the amount that is being loaded, and any known updates or conflicts going on. Uh-oh, <laughs> looks like I have a required mod missing in order for me to run a couple of mods, so that means that the game might run fine, but the mod won't fully load. For example, as you can see, I should be able to add a flower into this keg to get my floral essence mod to work, but I didn't install the producer framework mod, so it's not available to me. 
Everything else looks like it's running smoothly though. The console should always be the first place you look to see if something is amiss. Much better. Let's take a peek at all the different mods I loaded up. New farm layout looks great. I can see the fish in the water and kitty slimes. Mr. Ginger is wandering around. The new location has been added and my dust sprites and <laughs> craftables are as cute as ever. The buildings are looking fantastic too, but you know what? I don't think I want to keep everything here. So let's customize. Now that I have everything properly downloaded and working, let's take a peek into configuring mods to your preference. Mods that are configurable will generate a config text file in their foremost folders after they have been properly loaded up. And if you want to manually change a specific setting here, like I want these buildings on everything, but I don't really want to change the bus, you can adjust the text to do so. Now, let's say I want to be able to open up my calendar from the UI info suite with a different hotkey. That is adjustable here too. Most mods that are configurable will mention it in their descriptions, so be sure to check that out too. There is an even easier way to configure some of your mods though, and that is with a mod called the Generic Mod Configuration Menu, which I highly recommend. Not everything you download will include files to allow configuration with this powerful add-on, but many do, and you can at times adjust settings in-game to your liking. It will give you a little menu at your starting screen and also in your options at the bottom. Okay, now that I mentioned the GMCM, let's talk about other ways to make your modding experience easier on you. I mentioned mod managers earlier, talking about both Vortex and Mod Drops, and those are both fantastic tools, but I'm going to show you what I use as I find it so helpful with enabling, disabling, and updating my mods. Stardrop is a fantastic tool that can connect with your Nexus account and keep your mods up to date. What I love the most about this tool is the ability to create profiles for when I'm wanting to use only a few or use all of my mods or test out my own that I've created. You can easily create a new profile and just enable the new mods that you want when you are playing with, like say with friends, or then you can switch to a different profile for when you're wanting to play something like roguelike, or switch to the profile that has all of them on for your super modded farm, or any other mod combination. You'll be able to access the config files we talked about earlier from this too, as well as link directly to the mod page you downloaded from. If you have the premium, you can even update from in here. I still like to update mine manually, but that's just a personal preference. Being able to easily enable and disable mods from this tool helps a lot with troubleshooting what mods might be causing issues in your game or what's conflicting with what. This manager also automatically enables the mods that are required for your other mods to work as long as you have them all downloaded in the mod folder. There are a few more things that you can do with Stardrop 2, but you can learn all of that on their page if you want to deep dive. Now, mod managers help a lot with organizing profiles, and that's great, but as your mod collection grows, like look at this mess here, it might be a good idea to organize everything in here. Me personally, I like to keep them all organized by a typing that makes sense to me, including a testing folder for new mods, before I put them in their proper place or delete them because it just didn't work out. Folders and folders and folders work just fine as long as everything is extracted and named properly. Organizing your folders is absolutely not necessary, but I think it helps. If you want to manually disable a mod because you just don't want to use a mod manager, that is totally doable in a couple of ways. One, you can just remove the mods from the mod folder and they won't be loaded. The other way is just to rename the folder that the mod is located in with a period in front of the name. I used to just have a folder called dot off and I would drag the folders of the mods I didn't want to use into that folder and Smappy will skip over it and not load anything from inside. Keep in mind that there is a potential for errors depending on the mod that you are disabling, like deciding to disable a farm replacement and loading up the farm file that you are playing on that layout with. It's important to pay attention to those things. 
Uninstalling mods is also pretty simple. Either do it with one of your mod managers or just delete the folder holding it all in. Again, the same with disabling the mod. Pay attention that you don't have remnants of the mod in any save that you are loading because it could potentially cause a crash. If there is a mod you want to uninstall, just be sure to hide all the evidence of the item or animal or whatever first before you remove the mod. If you ever end up with a huge issue with mods you have just installed or uninstalled, your Smappy will keep a log of all of the errors. How you found that is by heading over to Smappy's site, following the instructions, and then you can add your log into the log parser. It will show you everything you can usually see in the Smappy console to help you find the problem better, or tell you the offending mod that is causing problems. If you are still pretty stuck and don't know what to do, I highly recommend sharing your issue and a link to the log over at the Stardew Valley Discord server under the modded game support section. People there are pretty helpful, extremely knowledgeable, and they're pretty quick to answer too. Well, I feel like that pretty much covers the basics of learning how to play with the modded farm on PC, as well as a few advanced things. That definitely covers a large part of my knowledge of it, aside from making your own mods, of course, but I wouldn't ask me those questions. Check out this playlist by the creator of Downtown Zuzu instead. Uh, that's how I learned how to make a lot of things like the Santa's Workshop for my holiday charity event and such. And if you have any basic questions, feel free to ask in the comments and check out all the links that I've added into the description, as I referenced a lot of different mods and sites in this video. I'm Wickedy, I hope this video was informative in all the right ways, and I will see y'all around.